going to take a few moments now to introduce the German verb to you. Um, there are going to be two things I'm going to be focusing on uh, during this presentation. The first is the infinitive form, and from there we're going to move over to a discussion of um, present tense verb conjugations. So every verb has an infinitive form. In English, the infinitive form actually requires two components. Two and then followed by the verb, to stroll here, for, for instance, on the screen. Now, what the infinitive form really is, it's just a subjectless action. There is no person here who's strolling. Uh, it's simply the act of strolling. To stroll is fun. Now, German has that same concept. German also has an infinitive form. Let's look at the same verb, to stroll, but in German. That would be bummen. Now you'll notice first thing off that there is no two. There, uh, German doesn't require two components to complete or to make an infinitive form. Instead, what German has is what it calls an infinitive ending on the verb. Here you'll see it's underlined in red. It's an N. Now let's take a look at another verb, kommen, which means to come in German. Now, the infinitive ending here is en. So, we essentially have then two ways of forming an infinitive form. That is, either tack an n or an en onto the verb stem. So, the question is well, do I use an n or an en ending? And that depends on the quality of the verbal stem. So if the verb stem ends in an L, so if you, ta if you remove the infinitive ending and then what remains, the verb stem, if that ends in an L, well then you're going to have to use an N for the, uh, for the verb standing, uh, for the infinitive form. If the verb stem ends in an M, then, or, or anything else besides, besides an L, then you'll simply use the en ending. Now the en ending is the standard infinitive form. Um, the n ending is, I would say, the exception. Uh, you'll encounter more en endings than you will simple, simply n endings. So to summarize, the infinitive form is the Let's, I'll say it's the raw action without the subject, without the a subject performing the action. Um, it could either have an N or an EN ending, infinitive ending, depending upon the verb stem. If the verb stem ends in an L, you'll tack on an N for the infinitive end, uh, for the infinitive form. If it ends in anything else, here, for instance, ends in an M, you will use an EN infinitive ending. So, I want to look about, I want to move now to our discussion of verb conjugation. Now, what a, what a conjugation is, it simply means that I move a verb through its different forms. So, I come, you come, they come, we come, he comes. Those are all. Uh, verb conjugations. German, it's a little more complicated to conjugate a verb, but there are patterns. So it's important that we master these patterns, that we memorize them, and uh, become more familiar and confident using them. I want to take the infinitive verb form, and this is the form that you'll find in the dictionary. When you go to use a new verb and uh, you look in the dictionary to find one, this is what you'll find in the dictionary, the infinitive verb form. So let's take a look at common. Now the first thing I want to do is to drop off the infinitive ending. I'm going to either drop off the en or the end. And this will isolate the verb stem. Now once I've isolated the verb stem, what I want to do is I want to tack on the appropriate ending. So this requires me to know, well, am I using the first person, second person, or third person singular? Or is it plural? So the standard endings are, as you see on the screen, E, S, T, T, E, N, T, E, N. 
So what you get is essentially, if we look at the next slide, ich komme, du kommst, er sie es kommt. I am coming, you are coming, he, she, it are coming. In the plural, wir kommen, ihr kommt, sie kommen. Um, those are the, that is sort of the standard way of conjugating the present tense verb. Now, of course, in German, there are always exceptions, uh, as in any language. Um, let's take a look at two of those at the present moment. Now, I have the verb stem find here. Now, the infinitive form is finden, which means to find. Um, I notice that, or you'll notice that the verb stem ends in a D. Now that's sort of problematic if I have a third person singular ending that ends in a T. Er findt. Or if I'm using the second person singular du. Du findt. It's hard to pronounce. So essentially this exception is trying to make the verb more pronounceable. So it's an exception, it's something to remember, it's an extra work that we have to do, but in the long run it's trying to make life easier for us. So if the verb stem ends in a D or ends in a T, what I want to do in the second and third person singular, well on the screen is the things that are marked in red, are plural second person, I want to insert an extra E between the verbal stem and the verbal ending. So what I get is ich finde, which is normal, du findest, which is changed. Um, this is so much easier to pronounce than du finds. Du findest, er sie es findet. Wir finden, ihr findet, sie finden. So if it ends in a D or ends in a T, I'm talking about the verbal stem here, we're going to have to insert an extra E in the second, third person singular, and second person plural. Let's take a look at another verb, tanz. Tanzen is the infinitive form to dance. Now, again, it's simply trying to make life easier for us by making, it, making the verb more pronounceable. If, it, if the verb ends in a Z, or if it ends in an S or an S set, an S set is that funny looking B, we're going to drop off the S ending. And I'm going to, I'm specifically, the only change that's affected here is the singular, second person singular, do. So um, instead of having do tanzt, I'm going to simply have do tanzt. So what we get here is ich tanze, which is normal, du tanzt, which is has the S dropped off, and then everything goes back to normal. Er tanzt, wir tanzen, ihr tanzt, sie tanzen. Now, there's one other thing that I want to address, and I, I want to include it here because this is one of those high-frequency verbs that, uh, that we use. I don't think we'll get to it for a little bit, but um, it's so important, and we use it so frequently, I think that the sooner we address it, the better off we'll be. And that is the verb to be, the, uh, the verb of being. In, in English, uh, we also have a, a, we have an irregular conjugation of the verb. I am, you are, he, she, it, he, she, it is. Um, German, English is a Germanic language, German is a Germanic language, so it's going to have that same difficulty. It's an irregular verb. So we're going to have to memorize this, um, but once you get it down, you'll use this all the time. Ich bin, du bist, er sie es ist. Wir sind, ihr seid, sie sind. So memorize this, and this will be something that you will use frequently. I am tired. I am bored. I am interested. 